Welcome to part three of our architectural uh, tutorial series. My name is Zoltan and today I'm going to show you how to finish work on our building model. Namely, we are going to add uh, a complex roof shape. We are going to look at the different roof planes, how to distort them to the shape you want them to be. Uh, we also add the rain gutters and we are going to do some uh, magic with some uh, columns in order to get the finalized version of our model. If you want to know more about the content I'm using, you can access the project files and PDF guidebooks in the description in this video. So let's get going. Let's create the attic space. For that, we might need to leave this uh, perspective view behind. Just a quick recap, if you want to toggle back and forth between the views that you have, you can do that with the page up and page down keys or with these toggles over here. Now, let's leave perspective and let's go to axonometric, which we can do by clicking on this icon over here and clicking on axonometric, which takes us outside for further editing. Now, our next task is to have a slab which would bridge this gap. How do we do that? Let's first uh, select the 2D, like so, and investigate what we have. Let's zoom in. So first of all, I have uh, a ground floor with the DWG drawing and the building. And also I have, if I go one, one uh, floor up, I have the, the first floor. Uh, I could keep on going, but there's no content over here. But this is where I want the, the attic um, slab to be uh, created. There's one way to do it. Let's go back. And I'm going to copy this slab from the first floor, one floor up. And I do that by, uh, by selecting it. So I need to select it. Uh, I was now lucky enough to select the slab precisely. But if you have multiple uh, things on top of each other, which isn't the case here because you have walls and doors and windows and whatnot, sometimes it happens that you're not selecting the right element. So for example, you selected a wall and you don't know how to find the right thing that you're looking for. There's always this jump list back and forth. And if you click on that, you can toggle between elements which are piled up on top of each other. So if I tell you to select something and you don't find exactly the thing that you're looking for, make sure you jump back and forth or just use this jump list to find exactly the element. So now I have the slab selected and my task is now to copy it one floor up. There are two ways to do it. You can either do it for, from the copy objects to other floor dialog, or you can just go back to the floor manager and click on the copy objects to other floor uh, toolbar and select the floor where you want it to be uh, copied. Now, I need to change the material because I don't uh, need this parquet on the attic. So I just select the, the slab and I click on the, the, um, the part of the slab which I want to change the material to. So I'm just going to use something else. I think a bright white would be fine, which I can find in the in model library already. So if I hit OK and I hit OK again, then the slab's material is changed. Another thing I need to change is this hole over here. I don't need that because there's, there's going to be no uh, staircase over here. How do I get rid of the hole? Uh, I'm, I'm selecting the slab and I go to the local menu and I can find the menu which is, uh, which is called hole and I need to delete the hole like that and now the hole is deleted. There's an exciting uh, design challenge over here. Uh, if I select the 3D, maybe you can see it better. If I zoom in, I can see that the slab is now not extending over the insulation layer, which I want it to. Now, how do we amend that? Obviously, I can uh, just you know, click on the slab sides and I can say that I want to offset it, but what do I offset it to? I need to make the floor below my slab visible. Now let's put the, the 2D into, uh, into focus again and see how do we enable and disable the visibility of floors which are not active. If I go to the floor manager, I don't click on the button, I click on the arrow next to it. I see all my floors over here. And by clicking on this light bulb, I can turn on the visibility of floors which I'm currently not activating. So even if I'm not on that floor, I can show that in a, in a different color. This time it's a grayish uh, dim color, it's not that strong. If you want to change the way it appears, if you want to change the color maybe to some, uh, some uh, washed out red or green or anything like that, you can go to settings over here and change under the graphics tab how the inactive building or visible but inactive floors are colored and you can change it to something else. That's just a detour, I'm not going to do that. Uh, quick reminder, if you want to reach the settings, you can do it on the, in the uh, bottom left or you can just go to file, click options and then you can find it. All right, so now I have the floor uh, visible. 
So what I need to do, I need my slab to be extending over the insulation layer. I'm going to zoom into one of the corners, click on the slab, and this, instead of offsetting it, I'm going to say offset all. And now all the sides are going to be extended all the way to this side. So now the slab is covering, let's just go into the 3D to investigate. Now the slab is covering that gap, marvelous. Another thing I need to do, I need the slab to go like this. So I don't want this kind of uh, extrusion. I want it to be going in one straight line. So I do that by clicking on the side of the slab and say that I want to offset it all the way here. And by clicking on that node, I can even delete the node that I don't need. I repeat the same step over here, like so. Clicking on the node would get rid of that node that I don't need. So this way, I just created the attic space. It's time to get a roof on our building. Now, switching back to the 2D, I can see that this uh, slab contour is what is going to serve as a base for my, my roof. Uh, now in Artshine, there are, uh, there are many tools to create roofs. You can either work based on predefined roof shapes. So if you know already what the roof shape is going to be, you can just find the right tool and just uh, create the roof. But this time, uh, the roof shape is going to be this kind of uh, push together L, L form. So I need to create something which tackles these kind of uh, shapes. So I go back to building roof and I'm going to use the roof in sketch mode tool, in which case all I need to do, I'm just going to track the contour of the existing slab like so. Click, click, and there's a point over there. I zoom in. If you, uh, By the way, if you made any mistake like so, you can just, uh, just jump back and that would allow you to undo your mistake. That's just a trick tip from me. So when you're done, you don't need to do anything but hitting an enter key. And that would actually take you to this kind of uh, roof editing tool. Now, there are many things about the roof that you can fine tune. You can either add, uh, you know, eaves, purlins, middle purlins, rafters, all the things. You can fine tune the, the roof to the tiniest detail. But at this point of the tutorial and at this point of our uh, design, I don't need this kind of level of detail. So instead of having a very nice detailed uh, roof, I'm going to work with a very conceptual one. So. Clicking on the roof style's name, you can change the style to something uh, simpler. So if I click activate, then the roof is going to be a much uh, simpler to understand uh, one. If you want to change how it appears, you can control the view over here. So you can say that this is a consistent color one or a wireframe or anything you want. Now let's talk about general properties. Um, there are many things you can do to define where the roof is starting from. So there are many criteria you can fine tune. This time we know the C value. So how high the roof is going to start in relation to the, to the slab below it. And we know for a fact that it has to be, this value has to be minus 300. Now you can click on update and then the, then the update would take place in the 3D as well. Uh, also, you can take into consideration the theoretic wall width, which is currently 380 millimeters. You can change that, and I, I suggest that you do if you need, but this time we don't need that. Eaves overhang, we don't need uh, either. But we need to change the materials, so we go to roof tiles. Now, in Arch9, you are able to ask the software to create every single roof tile as an individual 3D body, but that takes a lot of processing time, and this stage, we don't need that. So we just need to have very simple materials being applied and acting as roof tiles. So instead of adding, you know, 3D bodies, we are looking for uh, materials. So I click on this print bucket and with this, you can find the right color that you want. Now, if you don't see this roof blind core material in, the, in this jump list, you can just click on the plus icon and just type in the name. So I'm, I know that it's called roof blind and I'm just going to click on the one that I need. And if I select that, that is going to be applied to the roof. But there are two other roof elements which need to be defined. And one is the ridge, the other one is the valley. So the ridge you can see here, and there's also a valley uh, hidden over there. So the ridge should be the same uh, roof tile uh, materials. I don't see that here, so I'm just going to click on the plus icon and I'm typing in again, roof blind, and click on this material to apply it. Hit update to see it. But the valley, I wanted something else, so I'm just going to go with, uh, with uh, this pantone grayish color over here. So now that's done. That's very good. Uh, the underside of the roof has to be colored differently. I, do, I like this pine color, but it has to be instead uh, whitish. So I'm going back to general properties and changing these two elements to something else. 
uh, I'm changing it to bright white and also the underside and the, the side should be the same thing. Uh, if you don't see the material, you can always type it up here. So here we go. Let's hit update. Now, uh, the roof is starting to take shape, but there's a lot, uh, lot more to learn. So one thing we have to talk about is the projections and cuts. So here you can define how the roof interacts with the walls below it. This would be interesting later on. And also the layers and geometry is where you can define how thick the, the roof layers are. So if you want to add an, an additional layer for insulation or anything like that, you can do that here. But what we are mainly interested in is the, the pitch and shape because there's a couple of things we have to fine tune on this uh, roof. First of all, I want, well, most of my roof planes are of a certain degree and some are different than the others. So first I need to decide which is the, the roof inclination which is present at most uh, roof planes. And I can time that type that here. I know for a fact that the inclination that I have to work with should be uh, 25 degrees for most sides. So I need to click on apply for all planes and hit update. And now the roof is nicely turned into this kind of uh, differently inclined roof. And here comes another interesting story. You can click on any of the roof planes to activate them, which means that if you have a roof plane which is differently inclined than the rest, you just need to select that roof plane, make sure that this check mark is removed, and you need to add the right inclination. This is 35 degrees, and so is this side, 35 degrees. There you go. So now my roof is starting to look like the real thing, but there's one thing I need to uh, take care of, mainly this side. Because this side, I know for a fact that this side doesn't exist in my drawing, so it needs to be gone. And you can do that by clicking on Gable End. And if you hit Update, then the software creates this very nice roof shape. And this is actually what we're looking for. So again, I can save this roof into a roof style for later use, but I don't, if I don't need that, I just hit OK. And then the software just created my roof. Now, there's one thing I need to amend, and that is mainly uh, this part over here, because there's going to be, if I move here, there's, there's a gap, and there will be a firewall over here. So I need to move the, move the roof out of the way so that I can create a firewall. So I click on the, the roof, and I click on the roof side, and I offset it back. It's like when you're creating a slab or any, any kind of 2D element, you can just offset anything you want. I'm offsetting it to this small side over here, and another one, another click over there, and this way your roof is uh, created. The roof is now done, but there's a firewall that I need to create. Let's go into the 3D and see what I mean. If I turn my model, just a quick recap, if you want to turn the 3D model, you hit the shift key and the mouse wheel, and then you can just turn around, you can orbit the model. So there's a gap over here that I need to bridge somehow, and I can do that with a wall, which needs to be cut in a very certain shape. Now, jumping back in the 2D, I can uh, take care of that. So here's what I do. I, uh, I activate the 2D and I go one floor down and I can say that I want this wall piece over here. Again, reminder, if you haven't hit the wall but maybe you have selected the slab or something else, you can just use this quick jump list. So if you have this wall over here, you can copy it one floor up and then you can use that as a firewall. So you can uh, copy the element by going into the floor manager, but this time we are doing it from here. Copy objects from another floor and select the, the second floor. And now my wall is over here. There's, uh, there are two issues with that. One is that it's too, uh, it's not long, it's not high enough, not tall enough to, to bridge this gap. And there are some spots over here which needs to be covered. So I select the wall and I'm going to change the height to 4,500, make sure that it overextends. And also if you want to uh, make sure that this part, which is here in the 3D, is, uh, is bridged, you have to select the wall and click on the node at the end and say that I want to change the length all the way here. Now, the challenge is the following. I want this wall to be, um, let's go into the 3D, to be uh, following the inclination of the roof, but it needs to follow the inclination with a certain offset of 300 millimeters. So I want this to be a very nice um, firewall which overextends the roof. So how do we create that? Again, in Einstein, there are more than one ways to tackle a challenge, but I'm going to show you one, which is a very good tool. It's called a push-pull. Uh, let's see how it works. So if I'm in the 3D, 
I'm able to draw some editing lines based on which I can do some further editing. So I go to drafting and I say that I want to have a line. And when I do that, first I need to activate the surface onto which I want to draw. So I'm selecting the wall. And here I want a line that goes from here and I could snap it to the roof stop, stop a smallest point, but instead I'm just going to snap it over there. So line is already there, you can create another one, but if I don't want to do that, I just hit enter. And now there, there's one line over there, you'll see it later on. And I do the same thing on the other side of the wall, on the other side of the roof, I mean, by clicking here and clicking over there. Hit enter. Now, I have my lines over there, but there are just too many things in the way. I can't edit the wall with so many things going on. So what's the way to isolate this wall over here in a, like a 3D environment? You can do that by selecting the wall in the 2D and clicking on the 3D hammer because the 3D hammer is always rebuilding the things which are selected. So just click on the 3D hammer and then you have this nice uh, wall, just this wall. So the rest of the model is not discarded. It's just not shown in 3D, which is very handy if you have a very special design challenge like this one. So here's what we do. We need to have this lines extended upwards by 300 millimeters. So we do that by, uh, by going into drafting offset and clicking on the, the line. Now the offset tool recognizes that you are in a drafting mode. So you can't offset anything else but the line. So let's click on the line and start moving the mouse cursor and type in the value of 300 millimeters like so and repeat the same thing with the other line and make sure it's 300 millimeters upwards. And now what I need to do, I need to connect these two lines, which I can do with a T and L connection, but this time I'm not using the ones for walls. Instead, I'm using the ones for lines. So I'm going to use the L connection, select one of the lines, select the other one, and then the lines are met. Now, this is the time when you can discard of any lines that you don't need. So let's select this line, hit delete, select the other one, I don't need that either. Okay, so now I have the editing lines. The actual 3D modeling comes now because uh, this was just preparation to give me something based on which I can model. So I use the push-pull tool now. And all I need to do, I click on the surface. Now if I, if I hover my mouse over these surfaces, you see that the, this tool recognizes the lines that you have drawn. So you can just select the closed boundary, which in this case would be up here select it and then you can either extend it or you can just go backwards and by clicking it deleting the part which overextends so now i have the the this roof part this firewall created uh, i can get rid of the editing line so i can just hit delete here and there's another one but which i don't need hit delete and also i can change the uh, the materials to something else because this would look a bit uh, less professional that i see the, the the bricks and the insulation outside so i need to go to the design center looking for bright white and when i have that i can just grab onto the material and drop it onto the surface software asks me if i want to replace one material with another on all instances or in just this object so i'm going to use the letter uh, click on the surface that you want to change. And when I'm done, uh, I can go back to the 2D, activate it. And when I have nothing selected, I can click on the 3D hammer to rebuild the whole model. And when I'm done, I can just go back to the 3D and admire what I have done. Our next exercise is creating a uh, rain gutter with downspouts. So for that, we have a dedicated tool under building, roof, and gutter. All you have to do, you have to just select the side of the roof and the software would automatically recognize the roof's contour, as you can see in this, in this picture. Uh, it also knows that there's no roof on the firewall, so there's no need to create one uh, gutter part over there. So this is an automatic exercise. You can also create gutters uh, along a polyline, but this is the fastest way as it gets. So, First of all, I'm going to define a new section profile because I don't want this kind of U shape. I want to have a, a more rectangular one. Uh, so I'm going to use gutter section profile number two. But if you don't see on your copy of the software here in the uh, here this uh, profile, you can just go to the plus icon and look for the right profile here in this library. Now, once I have the right profile uh, selected, I need to do something with the offsets because I see that the reference line for this gutter is in the middle, so I need to shift that. 
So that's going to be a horizontal offset of 100 millimeters. And you can see the reference line jumping, or rather the reference line stays as it is, and the, the object is created in relation to that. And also we do a, a vertical offset, which will be minus 200 millimeters. And now the reference line is going to be exactly on the side, on the top right uh, corner of this of this profile. Now, changing the material is easy because I don't want this brownish thing. I want to have a grayish color. So I go to this paint bucket and here you can add another uh, another color for your object. So you just go to plus and add from the material library something which is like a steel or steel. Exactly. So let's hit OK. And then the, the gutter is created, but we also need the downspout. So let's go to the second tab, which is for creating downspouts. Now the software is going to show you with a green, sort of like a preview that with the current settings, this is the downspout you are going to get. Um, first, we let's change the length for it because uh, this is not long enough. The, the gutter would be up here, so I need to have a longer uh, downspout. So I need to change the length for it. 2.9 millimeters or 2,000 or 5,900 millimeters. So let's hit this uh, update to see how it would look like. So it's going to be longer. That's fine, but I need to position the downspout somewhere else because this is not the right way to go. There's a, there's a slider over here which would actually show you in percentage wise where the downspout will be created along the path of this of this uh, rain gutter. But you can also work based on exact values. So I know for a fact that the first downspout, because that's going to be two, uh, should be positioned uh, 5,700 millimeters from the right. So let's hit the check mark to create it. And there should be another downspout, which I create by clicking on the plus icon. And it's going to be created somewhere here. And the exact value for this should be 7,800 millimeters from the left. Let's hit the check mark. And then that's created as well. So you can toggle between the downspouts using this uh, button over here. So if you want to change the path for it, you want to change the nodes, you can do that. Uh, later on in the 3D, you can change the path manually, but this is the automatic way to do it. So if I hit OK, then the gutter is created with the downspout. And of course, needless to say, there's going to be a 2D version of it. So if you want to adjust the path, you can do that here. Let's learn how to place uh, objects onto the roof. The special thing would be is that the roof is inclined. So we are going to learn uh, how to put something on a not flat surface. And also we are going to learn how to bring in something from external uh, libraries. Now, as you might know, ArchLine is able to connect to many different uh, object libraries, including BeamObject or Cadena, Synchronia, uh, and also to the 3D Warehouse, which is the largest user uh, made material uh, collection. When you click on the 3D Warehouse button, you have to click on Direct Download, and that will open up a mini browser within the software in which you can uh, find uh, content that you're looking for. It's important that you need to be logged in. This is a separate login that you have to do via the Trimbo website, who are the owners of the 3D Warehouse. And here in the search bar, you can find the thing that you're looking for, and we are going to uh, put in some solar panels. So I have the, the name of the, of the object that, that I'm looking for. Uh, the name is... Uh, uh, dynamic dynamic model LSX. So we are looking for that. And what we need is uh, this object over here. So we are going to download this into the software for later use. Now, uh, if you if you click on download, you have several versions of the same uh, object, you need to use the same year version as you have uh, for ArchLine. So if you are using ArchLine XP 2020, you need to use a 2020 model. If you're using 2021, as I'm doing now, then you need to download the 2021 version. Now, uh, when you click on the object and you click download, the software would start downloading the object. And uh, if you have already this object in your library, which I have because I practiced for this presentation, then it's already existing. So I need to click on uh, overwrite. And uh, notice that I'm currently in the 3D. So I'm going to position this object over here in the 3D uh, world. So what I do, I need to select the surface onto which I want to snap this object to. Of course, later on you can fine tune that, but I'm going to just click and position this panel over here. You can see in the 2D it appears as well. Now, what I need to do, I see that this is now horizontal, uh, but it needs to be slanted. So what I do, I click on the object, and here in the property grid, I have uh, an ability to tilt things ahead. Now, if you remember, 
this roof plane is 25 degrees in inclination so i need to add the 25 degrees over here hit enter and that results in a sort of like a, like a tilted object which is nicely snapped onto the roof uh, but I also need a few more of these panels, so I need exactly altogether four. So what I do, I go to the 2D, in which, by the way, you, if you want to fine-tune where this panel is, you can just click on it and just move it uh, somewhere else with the Move From tool, so I can just make it coincide with this wall. And I can make a few copies, uh, I need uh, three more of these, so I go to the Movement Marker and I'm going to click Multiply, and I'm going to say I need uh, three of these elements, and when I hit OK, the software asks me, OK, what is the reference point from which you are going to copy the elements? And I'm going to use the, the top right corner of this, this object. And I'm going to move the mouse key. And when I do, the software starts distributing the, the panels. And I can do this graphically, or I can just type in the, the value uh, along which the object should be distributed. But I know for a fact that the value should be um, 3,120 millimeters, which is actually the the total width of three elements. And when I hit enter, then the objects will be created like so. Let's just go closer in the 3D and then you can see the results. So this is how you position solar panels, but the point here is that you can download things from the 3D warehouse or from other places, snap them onto surfaces and you can change their inclination and you can multiply them any way you want. There's a couple of columns that we have to position on this drawing. Let's see how to do that. So first of all, let's uh, select the 2D and go all the way to the ground floor because if we, if we go here, we can see that there are some references from the imported DWG onto which we can, uh, we can position the columns which are going to hold up this balcony and this roof. But we don't need uh, the visibility of the of the first floor. If I go back to the first floor, I see that this is the, the floor which I made visible on every other floor. So if I go to the ground floor, I don't need to see this kind of lines. So I go to, the, to this uh, selector where I can disable and enable the visibility of inactive floors, and I just go to turn off the light bulb. So now all I have is the ground floor with the imported remnants of the DWG. Now my task is to position columns onto this. So how do we do that? We go to uh, Building, Properties, Structure, and Column. Now this setting still remembers the settings for the column which was used as a railing next to the staircase, uh, if you remember a couple of uh, lessons ago. So now I'm going to transform this uh, to another kind of column. So first I'm changing the width and the height. The width should be 300 millimeters and the height should be 200. This is all right, but, uh, but I need to change the, the material as well. Now, instead of changing the materials one by one, I'm going to say same material, so I need to only do this once. So I'm going to click on the solid material, and I need to add another one. So I go back to the main, uh, main folder of the materials, and I'm going to type in stone wall, which is the material I need. So there are many permutations. I need the one with, with the name stone wall, uh, underscore uh, zero four eight. So I'm going to choose that. Hit OK. And now my column is almost done. But there's a couple of things I have to uh, have to clear up. First of all, I need to uh, change the the relative height, the base elevation, and that would be minus two hundred. And the total height of this column uh, should be two thousand seven hundred. And also, there's another thing uh, about the the placement of the columns. Now. You might not need to do this because you can place the columns even with this corner point, but I like to choose another easier to understand point, which should be this bottom over here. So I could be done with this. I could start positioning the, the column, but there's one trick I want to show you, namely how to add things or subtract things from the column. So let's go down in this menu and click on Cutout Recess Attachment. And in this way, you can add or subtract things from an existing column, which would be parametric. So if you, for example, add something onto this column and later on change the length, the height of this column, then the add-ons, the subtractions will move with the column. So let's see in reality how that looks like. First, let's click Insert New, which would show that with the current settings, there would be like a round cutout of this column. Uh, first of all, it doesn't have to be a cutout. It has to be an attachment. So you can see that now it's attached to the column and it won't be a circle, it will be a rectangle. So let's go to the 
profile selector and look for something rectangular you can either find it here or if you don't see it right away uh, you can just type in rectangle and find a simple rectangle so let's hit okay so now I have this kind of add-on on it and there's a couple of things I have to change for example I don't want this to be positioned from the bottom I want this to be snapped to the top which I do by clicking on this position in vertical direction measured from it should be top so now it goes all the way to the top like that and now I need to set some offsets up to make sure that this attachment is is positioned exactly in here um, actually before I do that let's change the material so that way I can see it better so the material should be something like uh, like concrete uh, and if I don't see it here um, let's just go back to here to the main selector and choose a uh, concrete 3 for the for the uh, solid and for the surface material as well um, here we go so now if I hit redraw I, I have it here and now I change a few things for example distance from the reference point I need to need to uh, use some cheating from this list so I, I have it now snapped almost to the middle and the thickness should be um, a 100 value there you go. And last thing to do for 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 a reason, this uh, this block is not positioned in the middle. If I go back to the settings, I can ask this uh, profile to be created based on this reference point. And if I do that, it would be snapped there. So again, if you want to position the element, then you can do it this with this settings. If you want to say where it is positioned from, you have to go to the profile selection, and there you can define that. So let's hit OK. And I think all the settings are right. I could set up some kind of inclination, but this is going to be one straight uh, upward facing uh, column. So let's hit OK. And now comes the time when I actually uh, position the columns. So I do that by building column. And now the software remembered my settings and now tells me that this is the time to actually uh, position my columns, which I can do by zooming in and find the right point like so so one column is selected and, and placed and here's another one over there and there's a third case but this time it's not facing the right way so I need to rotate my column which I want to position to coincide with the thing over here so I'm just going to say uh, rotate minus 90 degrees and then I can snap it over there let's go into the 2d and or I'm in the 3d and investigate how it looks like now in this scenario which is the above the entrance it looks pretty neat, uh, but there's one gap over here in the in the in the three D over here at the back on it. So now this column is not uh, not high enough, not tall enough. That is because the there's this uh, there's this ramp over here. So actually, uh, these columns are all the same height, but but this back on is a bit higher than this uh, kind of um, covering. So I need to change the height of this column, uh, for which I have a cheat sheet, of course, and the height should be increased to 2,800. And there you go. Uh, notice that when I change the height, the attachment, the add-on is not stretched. It's going to be just moved to where it needs to be. All right, so double click with the mouse wheel to investigate. Sorry, I have it selected, so I ask escape uh, closes the selection. Double click on the mouse key and right click to move the uh, move around in the 3D. And we are actually done with putting together the um, the model itself. So we started from importing a DWG drawing and we turned the two-dimensional lines into 3D building models. We created multi-level, multi-layer elements with walls plus insulation. We had several uh, levels. We have a ground floor. We have a first floor and an attic space with roof. Uh, doors and windows are inserted. We have a gutter. We have a nice firewall. And we also dealt with how to import objects from external sources. So the modeling part of this course is now, uh, that is part one, is done. And the next thing we are going to do in, in, uh, in later courses is how to get documentation, uh, dynamic measurements, sections, elevations from this model. So make sure you stay tuned for that one. Let's move on to the next lesson.